Hi guys, so in today's video, I will take you through my editing workflow in Darktable. Um, if you're not familiar with Darktable, it's essentially just a free version of Lightroom. Um, you can download it for free on your PC um, or whatever software that you use. Um, it can be a little bit hard to get your head around, but there are various tutorials on YouTube that make it quite easy. Um, but you can follow along to this video if you've never used it before, or if you are familiar with Darktable. Um, I hope that uh, I can help you. So I'm going to be using this photo. So this photo I took a long time ago. I don't even know when I took it. 10th of November. Yeah, that was, that was a while ago. Um, but I decided to go through my camera roll and find something to edit to show you. So anyway, so let's get into it. So the first thing we would do is, so whatever software you're using, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to show you what you should do. So the first thing you should do is to adjust the composition by cropping out distractions or refining the framing of the subject. So I'm not going to really, I'm not going to change it, but if you want to place your subject on one of the four intersections, then you can. I'm pretty happy with this just because the way that it's like a, it's like a, you know, you've got line coming down here and line come, going down there. Um, obviously if you want, if you have your subject, you might want to place it in the middle or you might want to place it on one of these four intersections, which is usually typical for rule of thirds. Um, so once you've done that, the first thing we would do is to adjust our exposure. So if you are using dark table, a quick and easy way to do this. So you can either increase the slider, um, or if you, if you put your mouse here, right click, you can fine tune it. So I like, I like to underexpose my photos. It adds a little bit more, um, mystery which is a theme that i like in my photos so yeah i'm pretty happy with that we can always come back to this after we've calibrated our colors so next step will be to use color calibration to set the temperature um the reason we do this is because we want to select what our camera used essentially. So if you don't know what your camera used, you can use one of the following. Obviously, if you're in Lightroom, you can just go ahead and use white balance. It will look, it will look exactly the same. Um, so I'm pretty sure that I took this in incandescent because it's usually what I shoot in. And instantly you can see that's completely changed the colors. So we don't need to do anything else. Obviously, if um, there are no neutral colors to choose from. You can click the color picker and say go for something neutral, so like gray. And as you can see, well, it did, it did a pretty good job to be fair, but you don't really have to do that. You can just select one off the uh, because you may have to fine tune it a little bit with the temperature, but obviously I don't have that problem um, right now. So that's all right. Um, so the next step, obviously, if you are following along with that table, um, would be to use sigmoid. So obviously I've already got it saved here, but you can go up to the little, um, search icon and you can type in sigmoid and it should come up straight away 
So if you're in Lightroom, you can just go onto your contrast um, slider, and this is where you can adjust it however you like it. Obviously, you don't have to copy me, um, but I wouldn't make any drastic changes. I would just slightly change it. So I like to have a little more contrast in my photos, but not too much, not, not too overwhelming. If your contrast is too strong, you might want to come back to your exposure and adjust to your liken. Um, I'm probably pretty happy with this. So we can next move on to color balance. So color balance here. So if it looks really confusing, just know that it's not <laughs> you don't really you, honestly you don't really have to touch this much but what you do need to know is global vibrance so that increases the overall vibrancy of the colors so if you increase it you obviously see your colors pop you bring it down you make it more muted so one reason is that um you want to use vibrancy over saturation because vibrancy enhances colors a lot better than saturation does um, so next we will go to rgb primaries so obviously if you follow an along and you're on light room um, this may look a little bit different so this will look so you would stay in color balance so same concept just different layout but this is where you can control the hues chroma and luminance of the colors in the shadows highlights uh, the overall color and the power which is kind of like the intensity of uh, the colors so I like to say I don't I don't use that because it's a little bit too uh, over the top so I like to use RGB primaries um, just it's a lot more um, simpler you can fine-tune each color so I would ignore the tint hue and tint purity because the tint here will um if you move it along you'll affect all of the colors in the picture so if you're in diet table you want to ignore that so my goal for this photo is to enhance the yellows and brighten the greens a little bit and then i'm pretty much happy with that uh, obviously you don't need to change all of the sliders but I'll show you what each one does anyway so the RGB primaries provides direct control over the reds greens and blue channels allowing you to adjust the hues purities and saturation red green and blue hues shift the hue of the corresponding color so for example increase Increasing the blue hue um, makes the picture appear more cyan. Well, so let's let me. So the purity is just the intensity. So I increase it, makes it more blue. If we go the other way, we go more towards purple. Um, and then if we increase the reds. So we go that way, we go towards orange, and we go the other way, we go towards magenta. So obviously you can quickly reset these, you just right click and just zero everything every time. Just quickly do this. Um, 
and finally the green hue so the green hue you increase so you go left to, um, to make it more yellow and you go right to make it more teal so the first thing we we want to do in this photo is to increase the lightness of the yellows so what we will do is bring the slider up and then so the purity tab is essentially just the intensity so as you can see zoom in so you can see as it as it come down it makes it more muted as it come up it makes it a bit more vibrant so that looks a lot better than it did before um secondly i said i was going to increase the greens so bring this up a little bit more so so cyan close to teal so we'll bring the blues up and lastly i would just arrange it this way and increase the red hue to bring out the lightness in the greens so i'm pretty happy with that i feel like the exposure may be a little bit off might light line up a little bit voice break Right, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. So the final step, we will add a frame. So I come over here and I usually go with five. Um, also to, to add a frame is, you know, really helpful because so that you know that you got your temperature spot on you can compare to a white background. Obviously, if it looks off against the white background, um, then you obviously have to um, adjust it. Obviously, you don't have to add a frame if you're in dark table, but if you do want to compare, you can come down here to this little light bulb and it does the same thing. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, but yeah, I, li I like to put a, a border around it. Um, and the last step is just to export. So if you're in dark table, you just come into light table and you can see the photo selected here. And we come over here to export. You can choose your folder just here. Um, choose your file format. So I go with 8-bit. I always put the quality on a hundred, completely up to. Um, I put high quality resampling on yes and color profile on sRGB, which is kind of un universal color profile. And then you just export, and it should save to your chosen folder. So one rule in photography: if I just come out of this image real quick. All right, so this picture was inverted, so the car was facing that way to the left. Um, subjects going from left to right, um, emphasizing emphasizes uh, that you're moving forward in life, whereas the other way around uh, leans towards the idea of going back to the past. So like I want the car to be pointing towards it as if it's going somewhere. So that's just one thing to like kind of keep in mind, but you don't need to apply it to every photo. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this editing process and found it helpful, be sure to leave a like and hit that subscribe button if you're new want more content like this. If you have any questions or want to see more tutorials, 
feel free to drop a comment and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.